Okay, so today we're going to be talking about this part made and manufactured by Matsura UK Limited. But it's not about the part itself, it's actually about the uh, fixture that holds it. Um, the fixture you see here is a traditionally designed fixture. This is not a complicated one. Some of them can be really complicated, but um, we used uh, Auto Degenerative Design and Fusion 360 to make the fixture you see below using additive manufacturing. And it's pretty hot, as you can see. The advantage of this is nobody actually had to design this thing. It was designed automatically, and it was done so in a couple of hours and printed overnight. This is a savings of weeks of time compared to com traditional manufacturing techniques, and sometimes these things can be really difficult to make. So this is a big, big improvement over some fixture design issues as you can sometimes see. So if we're in Fusion 360 and we go into the des generative design environment, what you're looking at here is not the fixture because that is going to be designed by the software itself. What you see here is kind of a mirror image of what that fixture will be. Um, to explain, I'm going in right now, and this is part of the process with uh, generative design in Fusion 360, and I'm telling the software that these particular pieces of geometry are obstacle geometry. They cannot be um, in my in my finished product. These include the um, the stock material, the table, um, bolts connectors and areas where um, tools need to access bolts and fix those things in place. The next thing I'm doing here, as you can see right now on screen, is I'm selecting several of these other geometries and these are my so, my so called preserves. These are areas I must have in my model and specifically here these are the bolt holes. These are the places where the fixture is going to be bolted to the table and where the fixture itself is going to be bolted to that uh, stock material that you see up top is a big large uh, flat cylinder on top of those poles. Now um, nobody's perfect and in this case it was also uh, my error. I had originally designed this thing and I forgot that I needed a little bit of more a little bit more longer bolts. I needed areas where the bolts could uh, could uh, fit onto the table better and I forgot to put those in. But instead of just throwing out all my work and redesigning, I just created new bodies and I am now adding those as obstacles as well. And as you can see here, one, uh, one bolt uh, missed my attention. So I'm gonna go in here and grab that as well. It's not a problem. I can use the multi-select, uh, just do a two second long uh, left mouse click and I can select that in a little window. When you have things that are not immediately visible, that's a nice way to work inside of Fusion. So if I've got that done, the next thing I need to do is not only, um, so the system knows now what it can't build and what it has to have in the finished product. But whatever we build also must withstand the forces that we can expect it to uh, see, right? Because it won't be any good if we make something that's not up to the task of holding our stock in place and holding it firmly on the table. So what I'm doing now is defining loads and boundary conditions. And in this particular case, I'm going in on those bolting locations on the table and I'm telling the software, hey, these locations are fixed in space. They cannot move. They will be firmly bolted to the table. They can't move. Next, I go to the locations where the stock is going to be bolted and I select those uh, interfaces where the bolts will be interfacing and I defined a load. I believe I put a, a fairly light load of 500 newtons or something like that on there. Um, because we're going to have many loads uh, working all at the same time and in many different directions. So I put loads in one direction off here to the left. Um, now these are not the only loads that we will expect during a um, full machining cycle. And as a result, I can use a little trick here to uh, make my work a little bit easier. I could define a second load case, load case number two, number three, and four, and so on, and I would define the fixed boundary conditions and the loadings each time separately. But because my fixed um, boundary conditions remain constant throughout, I can use this little trick of cloning my old study that uh, will allow me to create a new study with all the same loads and boundary conditions as the study before it, 
and then I can just go in instead of redefining everything I can just redefine or change the definition of the force and you will see me do that now again I chose I believe to have uh, 10 degree increments all the way around the uh, the clock so to speak and there's quite a lot of loadings I put in there so I cut a little bit out of this video it took me about five to ten minutes to do that when you're done you get all these loadings on the uh, left side and all of those will be taken into account so you can see them they're all there I wanted to prove it to you now we move on to goals and manufacturing conditions I'm going to tell the software that my goal is to minimize the amount of material used and I'm going to give it a goal of a minimum uh, factor of safety of two um, you can set whatever you like but uh, this case the next one I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tell it what kind of manufacturing equipment I have available to manufacture this fixture um, I can do a topologically optimized result but I could also just go in and say hey I only have a three axis CNC machine with a particularly large diameter tool um, to make this thing and uh, there are several different conditions that you could define uh, and this is what really makes this special uh, software because we can take those things into account. I can then go in and define several different materials. Um, I could do up to seven different materials that I could try out. In this particular case, we do know what kind of material we're going to be using in our additive manufacturing machine over at Matsura. They have some really nice HP machines. And uh, I can use a preview to see what my results might look like in the first couple of iterations. When I'm done with that, I can send this off to Amazon Web Services to have it be calculated. We do need a lot of computing power to do that, and that costs us about 25 euros to do, and as a result, we take 25 cloud credits, which is about 25 euros. This only takes a little while to upload, and usually within 20 minutes to a couple hours, depending on the size of your problem, you get some results back. So in this particular case, we had a couple hours of calculation time, and you can see I ran a number of studies, not just one. I did a whole batch series of them with different, uh, some slightly different boundary conditions and some uh, different manufacturing techniques. And uh, so I've got a lot of different results. Some of those are um, converged and some of those are um, completed. I'll talk a little bit about what that means, but you can show different uh, displays here where you can show details of each of one of these. You can see that some of these results are really freaky. These are, tend to be some of the additive uh, manufacturing results. Um, they may not be pretty, but they do as long as they are uh, converged. Converged means that those actually are able to be manufactured and they fulfill all of our requirements, meaning the minimum factor of safety has been reached and uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a viable geometry. Um, completed will mean, on the other hand, that while the software has completed its mathematical calculations, the um, results are maybe not what we want, i.e. Um, we do not meet our minimum factor of safety criteria or something like that. There is also the possibility of failed, um, that is another one, or processing if something's still running. You can also show the results in a different way here. You can show a graph. Um, comparing different um, uh, different uh, criteria, in this particular case we have a, a factor of safety with respect to the mass. Um, you can change that if you want and you can also show um, uh, these in a list form where you could sort and uh, filter over on the left side as well. If I click on any one of these results, you can um, it'll load up what the final most current iteration is and this is a really nice uh, unrestricted version uh, very lightweight um, this particular one I made it just for fun out of uh, titanium and I want to show you how this works if you go down to the very first iteration this will be the very first iteration all the examples out of this study will look exactly the same it fills up the entire area of calculation and then it does a linear static stress study and it looks and sees where the high stresses are and where the low stresses are and what it does is where the high stresses are it adds material and where low stresses are it takes them away and it does this in an iterative fashion until it converges on an optimal solution for you and each one of those iterations is available for you. I also wanted to show some of these uh, completed results. They didn't actually fulfill all of our criteria. They separated. We had some separating geometry 
uh, is what I believe caused that not to converge. But uh, this was done with a three axis CNC machine. And you can see I said that the CNC machine could only um, reach these uh, geometry from the plus Z and the plus um, and the minus Z direction. So that would be like uh, having a part that you could turn over on your machine. And we could indeed manufacture that part using a very simple three axis CNC machine. Now, uh, we wouldn't want to do that. It's a rather clunky piece of material, but it is possible. Now, this is a nice looking example here, and it's very similar to the one that I showed uh, originally. And we're going to export this as an actual model, because right now all we're looking at is a picture. So um, we actually want to get this model out, and that's going to cost another 100 cloud credits. It's a fairly complicated uh, calculation that we have to do on Jeff Bezos' uh, servers. And we can search this out, we can uh, take that, and after some number of minutes, and it does depend on the complexity of the model, after some number of minutes, we will get a result back that will um, that we'll be able to open in a separate window inside of Fusion. And uh, we'll wait for that to do that. As you can see, the uh, software is now ready to go. And uh, I've just got to click on that button over there. It will uh, give me a notification. It will open that file up in a new separate window um, so that I could save it out as a, uh, as a result. Now, keep in mind, you can do this for any number of models that you'd like, any number of iterations. They're all available to you. Each time you do, though, you do have to pay the 100 cloud credits to have that done. So after we do this, it does a little bit more calculation, and then whoop, in just a couple of seconds, you get the result in your um, in your Fusion workspace. Um, this is one of the big claims to fame for our generative design in Fusion 360 because this is a real CAD file. This is not a mesh file. There are other uh, competitive softwares out there that use uh, that only uh, output an STL file. And an STL file is not a real CAD file. And as a result, you couldn't do something like this. You couldn't cut a hole through it. You couldn't modify it in any way. Um, so this is a great advantage. It's even good for things just as simple as putting a logo on something. Um, you can't do that with an STL, and we can. So you can see we have some features down here at the bottom as well. You can see it kept our uh, obstacles and our preserves. And this, uh, this area in the middle is a combination of those. And this is an organic form. And we are able to turn that into a T-spline. Now, if you know anything about Fusion, you know that T-splines are editable. So we can go in and double click on that. And uh, we can push and pull on this T-spline. Now, if you're not familiar with T-spline, that's a whole other area um, of Fusion, a very powerful one that uh, I encourage you to learn about and basically it's kind of a push-pull um, kind of a sculpting environment um, which is very powerful for organic shapes and the sort and I'm just uh, fooling about with this to show you that it is in fact an editable soft uh, an editable uh, file and so you pull on that and um, it, what you'll notice I didn't I didn't recognize this uh, immediately. I had pulled it into the obstacle zone of the um, of the of the um, stock material, and of course that is part of the uh, of the timeline. So I could, if I so wished, um, change my stock material to uh, not have it cut that top part off. The part important part here is that this is editable. It is a real CAD file, um, and you can save it, and you can. Uh, 3D print it, but you could also cut it on a CNC machine. You could do anything you could with a normal CAD file. Now this thing was printed overnight on the HP Jet Fusion machine that uh, that Matsura UK Limited uh, sells in the UK. There's are really fast machines and they're really proud of it. And uh, you can see that on the very next day, after only about a couple hours of work, um, we were actually cutting metal on one of these machines. Now this fixture is very simple. But some fixtures are really complex, and this can save weeks of uh, manufacturing time and a lot of design work. Um, and you can you can you can be first 
to market with this kind of stuff. Um, they're proud of this and they've showed it to a couple hundred customers already and they should be. I hope you find similar success with uh, Generative Design and Fusion 360 and good luck.